Ottawa is getting closer to getting rid of mandatory retirement for employees regulated by the federal government. A private member's bill has passed second reading, and the Canadian Association of Retired Persons has called the law legalized aged discrimination. Susan Ng is CARP's Vice President of Advocacy, and she joins us now in studio. Susan, always great to uh, have you on the show. Why do you think that this is uh, an issue that our parliament should be tackling? The fact that, uh, you know, not just the federal government itself, but a lot of the industries regulated by it should, should be removing that cap on mandatory retirement. Well, it's about time they stopped. I mean, they are catching up to society, not ahead of it anymore. In fact, the law actually applies to broadcasting. You could have, and you do have, um, um, a pension policy that requires you to retire at age 65. If you don't want to, retire at that point, you want to work, you have to work, you prefer to work, you wouldn't be able to. And so this was this provision was actually protected in the Canadian Human yes, Rights Act of all things. It's, it's really quite extraordinary. And so that provision has been taken to court. It offends the charter. It's still working its way through the courts. And it will only apply to the Air Canada pilots who have taken that, that position to court. So we've been calling on the federal government to look, just change the law once and for all, catch up with society, catch up with the 21st century, and make sure that it's people's choice whether or not they retire. Is this, though, making a bit of a mountain out of a molehill? If you look at uh, the fact that, you know, uh, only 10% of companies with more than 100 em employees enforce some kind of mandatory retirement, the entire federal civil service, there is no mandatory retirement. It was abolished in the 1980s. So, in, in effect, you know, is this more kind of theater than actually an important public policy outcome? Well, it wouldn't be theater for those 800,000 employees that are still affected by this. And I think that those people should have the rights that everybody else do. And so it's important just to get rid of it. It's an issue of rights. It's an issue of being able to choose when you retire. It's a it's an issue of age discrimination. Why should you be defined by your chronological age? Let's define whether you should continue to work based upon your merit, your qualifications, your contribution and so on, rather than your chronological age. That's all we're saying, and I would say that most Canadians would agree with us. But somehow, that piece of legislation still stays, and I'm pleased to see that the private member's bill has made its way through uh, the Parliament and that it got all party support. So I'm very hopeful that this will be done before the next election. But some, are, some unions, and I think the pilots' union is one of them, has argued that that's part of their collective agreement. They want to collectively negotiate what their retirement age is going to be. Well, what's the harm if you actually let some people uh, stay on the job? In fact, when people have that opportunity, only a few actually want to. Most just take the full pension and, and enjoy their retirement. But for those who want to keep working, why? what is the harm that you're trying to prevent? by asking them to leave before they want to. In fact, I think what the problem with the pilots union was that they have a system where people move through the different uh, ranks lockstep. And so it does mean that if you have somebody sitting in that seat, you can't have it. And they actually had an economist come and look at that and see, well, just what kind of impact was that over the career of a pilot? And they found that six months maybe, maybe nine months, that your career would actually be held back on account of these people choosing to stay on. And what do you, what do you get in exchange? That when your time comes, you will have the choice to stay on. So that's the trade-off. So are you all at all sympathetic, though? Someone like me, Generation X, okay? We're sitting here looking at our futures, and we're saying, in effect, wow, we'd really love to have the kind of career path that our parents, the boomers, had after the Second World War, where yes. they could just fill up the ranks of senior management because, hey, the population dynamics worked in that way. Well, now, guess what? I guess we're all just going to have to wait while the boomers take as long as they want to, to exit stage left you know, from careers in academia, the media, government, you name it. It just looks a little bit like the, the boomers self-dealing to themselves. Well, no, I think it's it's really unfair to make it an intergenerational war. Well, why not? War. Maybe that's well, what no, it is. Let's look at Maybe it. Let's look at it, it. I think that what you should wait for is somebody who's incompetent in the job to leave it. 
rather than saying somebody has hit a certain age but might be a major contributor to the business to have to leave. And so I think that's the kind of exchange that we should really see in society. It's an issue of people's rights, their contributions, that they should be measured on their merit and not on their age. What about cost, though? I'm just curious. If, you, if you're allowing people to stay longer, does it mean that that company then has to shoulder greater benefits, uh, greater insurance costs for keeping on people past 65? Well, in fact, the Larger opposite. Salary. Actually, it's the opposite. I'll, I'll use the pilot's case because it's top of mind. When a pilot stays on the job, they continue to contribute to the pension plan. They stop taking out their pension. And the other pilots who don't have to get trained up in order to fill that position save training costs for the organization. So in fact, economically speaking, it's uh, the company's further ahead. So we, we have to be careful of, of uh, making jumping to conclusions that just because somebody holds a position at a higher salary, that that necessarily means that the whole company actually loses out. Well, what I do like about this is the fact that today in, in society, we have four workers for every one retiree. By 2030, we're going to have two workers for every one retiree. Yes. So having people work longer Absolutely. means that they're, they're not, in a sense, drawing down on all those other things that the rest of society is going to have to pay for. Well, yes. I mean, I, it doesn't matter to me what uh, what reasons government uses to actually take away this piece of age discrimination. I just hope that they choose on the basis of rights whether or not it actually fulfills some economic promise. Great. Well, Susan, always great to have you on the show. You've Thank always you. got your fingertip right on these issues. Our guest has been Susan Ng, the Vice President of Advocacy with the Canadian Association of Retired Persons.